Um, I've just been uh, trading war stories here with my colleague uh, Gary Robinson. He's the CEO of Uleska. Um, so, as I was saying, the cloud offers us lots of new possibilities, but and conversely, it offers us lots of new threats. So, cybersecurity has never been more important. And with that, I'm going to pass you off to Gary because he's better qualified to talk about it than I. So, oh, thanks thank very you. much. Appreciate that, and appreciate the, the organizers of Belltech inviting us to talk here at uh, this about uh, cybersecurity. So what I'm going to do today is we have 20 minutes to talk about what we call cyber poker. Now, really, it's an analogy to describe some of the aspects of cyber and how it can be understood quite quickly and how you can apply your, your processes and tools to handle it. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the game of poker at a very high level. And then we're going to do an analogy to cyber and say, here's how we can bring along some understandings of what we're doing. So who are we and who am I? So Uleska is a cybersecurity company. We focus on automation of security testing tools and programs, especially in the world of DevSecOps now, which is becoming more and more popular, and communication of risk and insight. So you've got an issue, but what actually does that mean to your system? I've been playing in this area for over 20 years. I've been a, a board member of something called OWASP. I still am currently sitting board member. I've been a security architect at Citigroup, and I've uh, founded Uleska over the last four or five years. So let's take poker as an analogy. Now, there's plenty of games we could have chosen. We could have chosen backgammon. We could have chosen chess, draft, etc. But poker's a good analogy because of the way poker is actually set up. So let's look at the game of poker. Well, what you do is you actually you, you gamble. You take cards, a deck of 52 cards, and you say, I'm going to bring these cards together, and based on the rules, I'm going to compete against other opponents. So... Pretty much you get about five uh, cards usually, depending on the type of game you're playing. Some of the things that are very interesting about poker is you play against multiple opponents at the same time. So you have lots of people trying to attack and trying to get uh, the money off you, essentially, in the game of poker. Deception is interestingly encouraged. And you don't know what cards your opponent has. So unlike chess, drafts, etc., there's actually a, a, an unknown element there. And the aim of poker is to get all the money. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these aspects, especially the multiple opponents and the fact you don't know what cards your opponent has. And we're going to look at that in a bit more detail now. So forgive the graphics here. I'm definitely not going to get a job in marketing after this presentation. But we're going to take a sample of uh, poker, one called uh, Texas Hold'em, where you have a couple of cards yourself and there's a mix of cards in the middle. And your aim is to build the best five-card deck, a five-card hand out of that. So in this particular example, we have an ace and a three. Uh, we pretty much are sitting here with a pair of aces, um, and that could be a very good hand. But right now, we haven't a clue what our opponent has here. They could be better. They could be worse. He could have, or he or she, could have a pair of aces, in which case they've got three aces and they're beating us. They could have an ace nine. They could have a pair of tens, a pair of fives. Or they could have two, three. They could have five, seven. Probably not much is going to happen there. So we're in a situation right now in this game, this hand, where against one opponent, and there could be multiple opponents there, we don't have a clue what type of hand they have and don't have a clue what we can do going forward. So in the game of poker, do you then give up? Do you stop? Or do you use tails and other things to try and improve your chances of being successful at this particular hand of poker? And that's where we're going towards. Essentially, people use tactics in this game to be able to improve their chances of winning. Now, there's plenty of tactics you can use, uh, but we'll concentrate on one called ranging because it uh, applies to our analogy here. So what is ranging? Ranging is what anybody, if you've ever played online or played with friends from home, etc., you get other information on what a person likely has. So if they, at the very start, have put in all their money, They've probably got a very high hand. They've probably got aces or kings or something like that there. Or depending on how they're betting, they might have, right, well, we know there was a lot of, say, diamonds in this hand, so they could have a flush. That may or may not beat us. It could be we know this person. We maybe played with them before. And definitely you get up to uh, the epsilons of the experts over in Las Vegas. They all have certain ways of playing. For example, there's some people who actually prefer to play the middle cards, the fives, the sixes, and the sevens because then they have better chances of winning in certain ways, certain uh, predictions. So what we're saying here is we were faced with a situation where we didn't have any idea what our opponents had. 
But what we've been able to use is a tactic called ranging, and there's plenty of other tactics, to be able to increase our chances of being successful in this exercise of playing poker. So how does this then apply to something like cybersecurity? Because cybersecurity is a wide-ranging subject. Like, I've been in it for a long time. There is uh, different nuances that change over time. There's different aspects of cybersecurity. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and analyze, if we don't have information, how can we actually use tactics to improve our chances of being successful at protecting our systems? So let's do our comparison from cyber to poker. So in cyber, the hacks are actually the weapons. Like what we mean by that is it could be a way of breaking into a system. It could be a flaw in a piece of uh, code. It could be a third-party vulnerability, etc. But that's really what we have to protect against as the organization and what the bad guys or girls or the attackers have to try and break into, use to break into our system. There's more players in the game, however. Whereas in a, physically, with a game of poker, you can have five, ten players around a table. In cyber, unfortunately, you've got as many attackers as can access your sites or access your systems, so that increases the number of uh, people you're playing against. Uh, typically, you battle both about five cards in a maximum poker. In cybersecurity, there's a lot more protections and hacks, and we're going to get into that in the next slide, but there's a lot more than 52 cards to be playing with. We play against 10 opponents in poker, as I say, but there's a whole number of different opponents with different sizes and skills. Again, in poker, you're playing against an individual. That person may be professional or may be a beginner. Again, in cyber, you'll have people who are uh, just trying out something, trying to run some tool or trying to run something against you. Or you'll have people who are actually an organized crime or a nation state that are trying to uh, get into a system. Deception's encouraged in poker. It's actually implicit in cybersecurity because nobody wants to be accused or seen explicitly to be uh, hacking you. Similar... You don't know what cards or hacks your opponents has. That makes it very interesting to try and uh, get into this next stage of the analogy, as we mentioned. And whereas in poker, you want to win all the money, you want to actually uh, you know, combat and bring their money towards you. In cybersecurity, it's a bit different. You're actually just trying to keep all your money or your assets safe, and that's a really important bit. So what's the tactic we use? Instead of uh, ranging like we had in poker, what's the tactics we can use similarly in cybersecurity? And what we cover is, is actually coverage. So, as we mentioned, there's a lot more cards, and we'll get into detail not there, but there's a lot more than 52 cards, a lot more uh, different ways to try and break into systems. You have things like the OWASP Top 10, very high level, uh, sort of introduction level uh, way of understanding some of the flaws and hacks that can be used. We can have the SANS Top 25. Uh, the ASVS actually had 287 different types of hacks you could break into, etc. And if you even go as far as search, you've got over 1,000 different types of issues. And so what we're saying here is this is ways that any attacker could try to break in to your system. So if you take the SVS, there's potentially 282 or 287 different technical ways they could try to get a foothold or a breach in our system. What do we have in terms... We, we, we don't know which they will use. We may not even know which we're vulnerable to. So how do we increase our chances of doing that in a modern system? It is not by trying to absolutely cover everything every time we release. We live in a world where we release daily, if not weekly, if not monthly. You do not have the time to actually check all of these unless you're putting in a lot of automation, which is what Uleska helps us with. But there's even aspects of that there are, are operational, cannot be automated, and has to be protected against as well. But it's the understanding, it's the awareness of the different checks and the, how they could affect your system that helps you provide coverage and helps you protect yourself against the various competitors. So just a mention on security tools. The security tools are, there, there's many of them out there. And... Some commercial tools are more wide-ranging, some open-source tools are very, very good, and some are very specific. But what we have done some analysis with, and we're going to, we, we, we did analysis before with some uh, people in the industry. We're doing that again with, in a way that's going to allow us to release it publicly as an open-source project to let everybody understand the way these things uh, communicate or these things work together. Because if you take some tools... Um, for reasons of not being sued. We haven't mentioned exactly what the commercial tools are. But if you take something like ASVS as a metric of all the 280 types of uh, breaches you could have, tools will not cover all of it. In fact, any particular commercial tool will cover a good percentage, but not all of it, and none of them pretend to. 
You could uh, incorporate other tools, like SQL Map is a very famous one for uh, that was used to break into TalkTalk. Talk. Uh, other tools like Neat to SSLIs, etc. They can be used, and they can increase the coverage you have of protections, but they can't give you 100%. And so what we need to look at here is in terms of our playing the, the cyber poker game, it really comes down to what protections can we do, what protections can we have in our timeline and in our budget, and how does that compare with how the attackers are going to attempt to breach into our systems. So let's take a, again back to the card game analogy. We have certain controls that are being applied on our software, infrastructure, cloud, etc. before we release. Now, I'm not going to show, and I haven't uh, programmed it in, what the attacker cards are going to be. And by the way, each of these is an individual aspect of ASVS. Uh, as I said, there's 280 of these that could be breached around. But in the game of cyber poker, what you're almost trying to do is a snap. You're trying to say, if this card's going to turn over, and that's going to be SQL injection, which the attacker is using to try and attack me, then I have that protection in place, and therefore I'm safe. That's great. If you have more cards than the attacker and you're, uh, you cover all the, their attacks, that's great. If the attacker has more cards or if the attacker turns over a card for which you don't have a protection, that then means you're vulnerable. That is a risk for you. And that is something that you have to then work out how to, how to uh, check. Now, what's interesting in the world of cyber poker as opposed to standard poker is that we're not limited, not limited to five cards. We're limited to, to our budget and to our time. And that's what we're seeing in the world of cyber uh, going forward. This is a section on the future. What's really, really interesting we're seeing is that a lot more protections are needing to be applied. If you think about it, the, the game of poker, you have 52 cards, and those cards have been the same for the last couple of hundred years. It's actually interesting to look it up. Some of those pictures actually have references to Joan of Arc or particular kings, etc. That's not the case in cyber. The cyber protections you would have today might be different than what you needed 10 years ago or 20 years ago. You wouldn't have had cloud checks 20 years ago. And we think of the, cloud, the checks you're going to have in five years' time or 10 years' time, you've actually got a lot more control, a lot more uh, need for control on those cards. So it's very interesting that in the game of cyber poker, the deck is constantly changing. And if you don't change your deck as frequently or as quickly as the attackers do, that's going to implicitly be a vulnerability that you have to worry about <coughs> being covered. And it's also interesting that we're here taking the ASVS. Now, the ASVS stands for Application Security Verification Standard. As you can tell, the OWASP marketing people were off that day when we named that. But that's very specific to application security. And that's 280 odd issues, not even covering Kubernetes, infrastructure, real cloud standards that the CSA are very good at defining, etc. So there's a wide range we need to cover. And one of the aspects we see is actually the processes slowing down our ability to do cyber. DevOps has been a transformation for software. You don't really have release engineers anymore. You've got DevOps engineers, and you have the ability to pipe this stuff out within minutes. However, cyber still tends to slow things down. And we've seen some studies, and again, we're writing a blog on this here, be out this week or next week, that came from Lorca and Deloitte over in the US, or sorry, the UK where one of the main issues they're seeing is cloud security tools not covering everything that's needed, the inability to run them efficiently, and actually not enough cloud security engineers to go around the different organizations from a number of CISOs having this, uh, this conversation and, and public in, publishing those results. So whenever you're bringing lots of different processes and tools together, these are where we see the main pinch points being. And those pinch points slow you down they cost the, 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 the time, they cost money, and that's actually what reduces your ability to have a larger hand of cyber poker cards. If I go back, you can, if you have a larger budget, you can buy more cards and you can actually do more checks. If you automate them and you make your processes very efficient, whether that be through tooling or through efficient processes or release processes, then you can have more checks. And if you have more checks than your opponents, that really gives you the ability to give, give more coverage in terms of cyber.
So that's the end of the presentation as it is now. Um, I had the option there of any questions, but I understand in this format we're not going to be able to do live questions. But we are on Twitter. We're on uh, uh, LinkedIn. If you have any questions for us, if you want to come up with anything, uh, or if you want to take part in our open source project where we're bringing all these tools and controls together and being able to map them out so that anybody can, can understand, oh, well, I have tool X, Y, Z running. I know I then have these protections and these gaps. We're very happy to make this open source and have everybody involved. We will have experts in the industry being involved in that project, and we're hoping for Belfast to be actually more of a community there to bring that together as well. So with that, I'll thank you very much for your time and your presentation, and I'll uh, leave it at that point.